Welcome to this segment of Dell Technologies, Five Steps to a Smarter Private Cloud, where I'm joined by Juan Martinez from AMD, one of the sponsors of this event. Welcome on board, Juan. Hey, thank you for having me today. Very happy to be here. Yeah, happy to have you and AMD on. I, I think again, AMD has really been innovating for over a decade in the data center market now. And the theme of today's event is data center modernization, which is all the rage given everything that is transpiring with applications. Why should customers consider modernizing their virtualized and other legacy hardware with AMD and really why now? Yeah, I mean, I, I love the question because as, as you know, we are in the middle of a very important moment with AI, right? I think we can, we can easily conclude that AI is significantly changing the way that the data center is defined. And most of us and our customers are probably asking, hey, what are the right tools that we need to have in order to be able to be ready for AI, right? And I think one of the immediate or quick answers that probably they are getting into is, hey, probably the tools that I've been using in the past are not necessarily the, the ones that I need to use in the future, right? Um, the other element that I think is super important, and probably let me go to the last part of the question, which is, hey, why now, is again AI, right? Our customers, regardless of the industry that they are, they are facing two potential outcomes. One outcome is be a disruptor in their industry, which will be a great for them, but, or uh, be disrupted by someone else, right? And I think many of these companies are the customers are looking into, hey, how I'm going to modernize those legacy applications, that legacy hardware that I've been seated in my data, data center for so many years. And I, I think it's putting them in a situation where they really need to start looking into, hey, be out of the comfort zone and the status quo and really be very pragmatic in terms of how to move forward with the right decisions to modernize their data, data center. And I think that's where AMD uh, plays a role, right? Um, AMD, in, since our last five generations of um, Epic uh, processors, has been demonstrating a significant uh, focus on execution. Uh, we are delivering with predictability to our customers um, a very robust uh, value proposition with our technology. We are demonstrating that they can gain significant um, performance and improvements uh, gen over gen. And most important, and I think this is kind of the, the, the significant reason why AMD is, there is no other offer like AMD right now. When you look from technological standpoint, when you look from um, performance per dollar, there is no other um, uh, offer in the market like us. And I think that is a reflection of when you look into uh, the IDC numbers, we are, are already 40% of the CPU market, right? So there is a clear uh, trend uh, in the way that we are gaining att traction with the customers and be the option for those customers uh, to what is needed uh, for their data centers uh, moving forward. Yeah, let's dive into that a little bit more because I, I think a lot of organizations are looking at their virtualized environments and, and trying to figure out what to do. How do the AMD Epic processors in the Dell PowerEdge servers really help their customers and your customers with those virtualized environments? Yeah, I think, look, there is a, an evident trend right now in, in, the, in the industry and, and the market, which is, Customers are in a process to refresh and modernize the data center, right? And, and IDC, Garner, and many of the um, analysts in, in our industry are highlighting this trend, right? And when you look into the customers that are uh, running virtualization stacks, call it VMware or others, right? Um, they are in general looking for something in common, which is, hey, I need to do more with less, right? That's kind of the, the premises of where they are right now. And when, when we look into what we are offering between Dell PowerEdge and our AMD Epic portfolio, basically we are getting that customers are able to run a larger number of virtual machines per, per server versus what they used to do in the past. Um, they are able to get up to 192 cores uh, of performance, high memory bandwidth, um, and on top of that, uh, we are able to really bring a, a comprehensive path for, for migration, right? And that's basically what we are working uh, with Dell to make sure the customers are, are able to get um, the right value uh, and, and the expected benefits of this uh, new technology in their, in their um, environments. Um, 
another element that I, I, I really like to highlight is, I don't know if you are aware, but both Dell and AMD holds two world records uh, of VMark 4.0, right? On performance per socket. And you probably will say, well, why this is important? Well, this is important because customers basically what are gaining uh, by moving into Dell PowerEdge with AMD Epic is better cost uh, from hardware perspective, software perspective, better power management. Um, and that translates that they are getting the right infrastructure with the right um, scalability in the density um, in uh, in alignment with what they need uh, for, for their IT needs. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And I think that one of the things that's really interesting is, again, that not only helps from a density perspective, power and cooling, uh, but also licensing costs uh, when you're looking right. at software that are licensed that way. Let's kind of dive a little bit deeper here from this perspective. You know, private cloud re-architecture and modernization is really taking off. We see it from the customers that we talk to and the organizations we talk to on a daily basis. Why should customers consider that their businesses take a look at PowerEdge with AMD Epic for their private cloud infrastructure that's becoming so key to all of their initiatives, AI and virtualization and private cloud? Yeah, look, if you look um, into the customer spend, I would say, and some of the data that we have, 83% of the customers are looking to um, rationalize their IT spend, right? But just a fraction of them are really seeing the benefit uh, in terms of uh, uh, the approach that they are using uh, in order to be effective. And when we look into private cloud, basically um, customers that are um, in, uh, managing this, this type of uh, options in, in their environment are looking for scalability and control, right? And, and basically these customers are looking for, hey, I want to uh, consolidate my workloads um, I want to get shrinking, shrinking my licensing cost. I want to get better uh, and be, uh, better ROI from my investment, right? And ultimately, what we are putting on the table is, hey, we have a comprehensive path for them to deploy um, a high performance um, solution, right? That helps them to meet all the requirements that they that they have. Um, AMD Epic is basically putting all the higher core count, the high memory bandwidth, and Dell is putting uh, all the comprehensive path um, to manage all the transition in a way that is making sense from technological standpoint and cost uh, st standpoint. So basically what we are trying to make sure is for these customers that the migration is going to be it's straightforward. We are working with Dell very actively uh, to have co-engineer tools that helps them uh, to have a comprehensive path to maximize their pr private clouds and, and, this, and the solutions that they are running in those private clouds. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a key is people want it to be simple and highly integrated. And you know that cloud operating model is all about that simplicity. You know, what does it mean in practical terms and how does, you know, this drive efficiency for customers when they're looking at it? Yeah, I, I really like this question uh, because what we are really looking to to drive here is a couple of things. Number one is fastest uh, business outcomes, which is absolutely essential. We want to make sure customers are getting uh, an, a positive uh, business output from all of these investments and transitions uh, to PowerEdge and AMD. Number two is a uh, tangible uh, savings, right? Um, and and I think this is this is something that we have been saying multiple times uh, through the last years. But in the past, you used to probably uh, implement se seven servers to do something that you can do today with one server, right? So that's just, that's one of the immediate benefits that customers are getting, right? Is hey, I, I'm able to really shrink in my um, hardware um, uh, footprint. And I will give you an example. There is a company, uh, Fulgent Genetics, um, uh, which is a leading biotech company. They moved to Dell PowerEdge with AMD Epic uh, processors for generation, and they were able to cut 90% of their footprint uh, in, in hardware. That's a significant um, improvement. Uh, we have also OSF Healthcare in, in Florida, a healthcare provider, that they were able to cost almost 50% uh, their um, annual um, uh, purchases in, in technology bring significant ROI in, in, in what they have today. But also, if you go into the uh, software licensing, I mean, software licensing is probably one of the most um, expensive elements in a data center. 
Um, and what customers are getting uh, by working with Dell PowerEdge and, and AMD Epic is basically to get uh, uh, the option to maximize uh, the licenses that they already have, which is going to bring literally better TCO and ROI on, on the investments that they already have. So I think there is um, a significant story of value um, into what the customers get when they are working and looking to use a uh, Dell PowerEdge technology with AMD Epic uh, processors. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's true. I mean, I, I we were talking with the folks there and I, I think a lot of it was the you know, OSF uh, healthcare uh, talked about 50%, uh, you know, being able to reduce their capital expenditures by 50%, which was just amazing numbers and Emirates uh, MBD really saw 42% better performance and 20% better reduction in virtualization licensing costs, exactly what you were talking about. Uh, is that, do you see this as really common uh, outcomes for those customers? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I definitely believe there is a significant story uh, and output in terms of benefits on, on the TCO and ROI that customers get. Um, and and as you were saying, I mean, it's, it's, it's not just the hardware footprint, it's the licensed footprint, is the overall, I mean, you know, energy consumption these days is one of, is a very particular topic that customers are putting more and more attention, governments are putting also more attention in terms of all the regulations around that, right? And and customers are looking to, what's, what's the best option that I have? And I get back into a comment that I made earlier is how I can do more with less, right? And that more with less translate into what is the right technology that I need to have in my in my company t in order to deliver those business outcomes that, that we are um, looking to deliver. No, I, I totally agree. And I, I love that comment about power and cooling and data centers because funny enough, it, you know, there's only so much power uh, left in the world right at the moment. And AI, AI is hungry for power to put it mildly. <laughs> So, but yeah, I, I know also AMD, like you said, AMD is really focused on that. You know, how does the AMD portfolio address AI workloads, especially not just across the data center, but from cloud to edge to endpoint, because AI is going to live everywhere and it's not only on things like GPUs, uh, especially oh, yeah. out at the edge. Yeah, I, I mean, AI is everywhere, period, right? Uh, I mean, when we look from training models in the cloud all the way down into the inferencing models at, at the edge, um, and, and, and obviously from our side, we have a very interesting and robust portfolio of CPUs, GPUs, DPUs, right, that when are uh, included or as a part of the servers uh, and Dell PowerEdge uh, servers, um, is kind of the best combination for customers to really jump into what they need for AI, right? But the real conversation that, that we need to have with customers is, hey, how, how we help the customers to identify what are the right engines that they need in order to uh, support their AI workloads, right? And ultimately comes down into what is that roadmap, right? That they can trust Dell, that they can trust AMD, that we together can work into that in order to deliver a comprehensive path for them to to build that road to AI, right? Some of those customers are already way into, others probably are a little bit behind, but ultimately I think a, a, all customers are, are really looking into how to tackle the opportunity of AI and, and that's what they will get from by working with us. Um, the, the other point is um, we, we believe that um, the next uh, a wave of AI is going to be uh, at the edge with uh, inferencing models, right? And and part of what uh, AMD Epic uh, bring is um, uh, high uh, in the context of AI workloads that are highly parallel um, is is be able to really provide value in terms of the transactions uh, and the tokens and the efficiency that uh, these servers with our technology, especially with AMD fifth, uh, Epic fifth generation, they will get in order to be efficient running these uh, AI models uh, at the edge. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think, again, this is one of those things that you know, most customers aren't starting from, you know, ground zero or greenfield or things like that. There's a lot of brownfield applications out there. You know, and part of this is they want to build those into their AI and be, make them AI enabled. What are some of the considerations that customers should really know about 
migration of legacy workloads to AMD and what are what if any are there deployment considerations that you were kind of alluding to? Yeah, I I, I think you you are spot on in, in the question because um not all customers, as you said, are starting from scratch, and actually many are coming from legacy systems, right? Um, and one of the key works that we are doing with AMD and with Dell is to work with that ecosystem of partners and also ISBs, right? To make sure that we are able to have a comprehensive path for customers to be able to manage the migration, right? Um, and basically what we are putting um, to the customers uh, that are heading into this direction is different resources, uh, benchmarking tools, uh, virtualization utilities, uh, compatibility checkers, right? That basically will help to plan the migration, but also execute the migration, right? This is probably one of the most uh, important elements uh, when we are having these conversations with customers, because ultimately what we are looking is how these customers are able to maximize the compatibility, reduce the downtime, and ultimately get all the benefits that we already spoke during the last minutes, right? In terms of the benefits from technology, from TCO, et cetera, that they are, they are, that they are looking to have. The other element that I will say that I, in my opinion is absolutely important is when you look Dell portfolio, right? I mean, customers are able to get from Dell a really interesting path, not only from technology standpoint, but what is the right solutions, the right technology that they can get from Dell and also fit into their budgets, right? So I think there is a complete story of value uh, between what AMD is doing with Dell, uh, uh, with Dell and the partners in order to deliver that solution that is going to really fit into the customer needs. I, I couldn't agree more, and I, I think that's a great place to leave it. Thanks for coming on, Juan. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the time. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more of Dell Technologies' Five Steps to a Smarter Private Cloud here on theCUBE, the leader in technology analysis and news.